Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here, and in this tutorial we're going to be taking apart this animation here, which I call a wave displaced circle. This was actually a question on an After Effects forum where somebody posted this animated GIF, animated GIF, whatever you want to call it, and they were asking how to construct this in After Effects. So in constructing this, it was actually a very interesting exercise. And in demonstrating this, I'd like to show you some plugins that on their own don't seem that exciting, but when you combine them with other plugins, they become extremely powerful. So that said, let's dive into our new comp here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is create a straight line. And Although this will be a straight line, I'm actually going to call this our circle because there's an effect that we're going to use to bend everything around into a circular shape. So first things first, let's get a straight line going. Now a great way to do this, there's lots of ways to do it, but I'm going to use beam. Beam allows us to keep our Y points exactly the same. So this way I know my line is actually perfectly straight. I can also set the starting and ending points to the width of the comp just dialing them in numerically. The length isn't filling from point to point because our length is set to 25%, so let's turn that up to 100. And for now, I'll set everything to white. Maybe we'll come back around at the end and create some variations on this. Okay, so we've got a straight line and we're going to distort this. Now let's look back at our original here. When I see things that have variable distortion, so things that have a zero distortion in one area, other distortion here, and then a varying distortion in between. My mind tends to go to something called a displacement map. Displacement maps allow us to create very specific luminance maps that we can use to distort an image. So to do this, first of all, let's name this something other than comp one, because that's a big pet peeve of mine. Uh, this will be our main wave circle comp. Next, I'm going to make another comp, and this is going to be our displacement map. I need to make sure to make this in a composition and not just a solid layer because, well, when all else fails, pre-compose, right? The reason we need to pre-compose is on this layer, we'll be applying our displacement map effect. And when any effect in After Effects uses another layer, it looks at the source of the layer. It doesn't look at any transformations, masks, or effects that have been applied to it. So I need to create my displacement map inside another composition. Now I'll create another solid here. And for now, I'm just going to apply a ramp. Let's uh, move these points around. Actually, I think I have these backwards. Okay, so I need to get that displacement map into this composition. Here's a nice little trick. You can right click uh, inside your comp, tell it to reveal the comp, and it'll pull that up in your project window, and you can just drag it right down. Oops, not to the comp itself, but where you would like it to go. So there, there's my displacement map. And on this circle, I'll go to my displacement map and set this to use the displacement map layer. I don't need to see it. I just need it to be there. Now we're not going to be doing any horizontal displacement because we are basically creating up and down displacement. So I'm going to set this to off. Now also when we set this to off, I don't know this is a, a bug in After Effects, this will still actually distort if it's set to off. Notice if I turn up this horizontal displacement, it shouldn't actually be doing that if this is set to off. I don't know why there's an off function if it doesn't do anything, but make sure to zero out your horizontal displacement. Okay. so vertical displacement is going to use its luminance and we'll set this to uh i'll set it to 150 for now okay same thing with these points here i want to make sure that these are pretty well aligned here zero and, and 1920. uh this isn't so critical but i guess while we're here let's zero or get those all nice and even at 540 in the y-axis. Now, this is what I'm talking about when I say, okay, the gradient ramp in itself isn't really that exciting. But what we can do is layer on top of this. If I go to color correction and lay colorama on there, colorama is kind of somewhere in between. It. I don't consider it a color corrector, um, but it's not really a generator either because it has to be fed something. That's why I'm using the gradient ramp. So the gradient ramp is generated and that is fed into Colorama. Colorama looks at 
calls it the intensity, but it's basically the luminance. It takes that intensity and remaps it to this color map right here. And it's really useful. So in our case, we're going to use Solarize Gray. So what it's doing is mapping black to white back down to black. And we need this because we want a seamless loop. So we want things to go up and down, up and down, over and over. Now, not only can we create this seamless loop here, but we can also go into our repetitions and set this to something like five. Now we've got five of these. Let's take a look at what this looks like distorted. So it looks a little bit messy right now. Mainly the reason is because we are set to eight bits per channel. What's going on here is that the gradient being generated by that gradient ramp and then fed into Colorama isn't accurate enough to generate a smooth shape. So let's go down here to our bit depth and option, click on that. 16 is going to be pretty good if you want to go to uh, 32, uh, knock yourself out. But 16 is going to be good, at least for now. So now we are creating a triangle wave from this because these are linear gradients. In fact, just go back up here. Uh, the gradient ramp in After Effects is a linear ramp. So when it goes from black, uh, zero black to its peak white, it goes in a linear fashion. And there's really no way to control that. Now, let's duplicate our viewer here or go up here and say uh, new viewer. So now we've got our displacement map. And then over here, we'll look at our uh, results. So I can kind of see these both at the same time. There's a couple ways to change this. Um, one way, if I go to our displacement map, I can simply blur this. I've go to fast blur, set this to horizontal and turn that blur up. It'll start to soften the tops of those waves, which is probably a pretty easy way to do it. Um, a blur is going to be a little bit longer to render than the other method, which is going to color correction, curves, and then we can use the color curves here to remap this ramp. So I can pull this one up at the top, and this one down at the bottom. Now back in our main comp here, uh, we haven't actually distorted this into its circle. So let's do that. So we'll go to this layer here and go to distort polar coordinates. Now by default, it doesn't use the setting we want. We want a rectangular shape to a polar shape. So it's going to start with a rectangle, distort it to a circular shape. And let's turn up the interpolation to 100. And now it's kind of bent around in a circle. At this point, I can make the second component of this. So this is going to be circle one, and I'm going to duplicate this. We'll call this circle two, because in what we're trying to create, there's actually two interweaving lines. This second one, all I'm going to do is going into our maximum vertical displacement and set this value to a negative 150. Now, I need to kind of neutralize part of the displacement on this uh, displacement map here. This is actually very easily done simply by overlaying gray. Gray is neutral according to the displacement map. So gray is zero displacement in either direction. So if I create a solid with a zero uh, percent saturation and 50% brightness, this will create gray. Again, this will neutralize, neutralize that uh, distortion. Let's go over here and just add a mask. And I'll feather this. Maybe 150 pixels. And make sure this is centered. There we go. Looks like I've got a bit too much of that distortion. Let's bring this down. I'll say this would be negative 80 and positive 80. Let's close this up. So it's getting pretty close. All we need to do is animate this. And what's going on here, if you just kind of watch it for a while, what we see is that this sort of half circle shape is moving in one direction. The waves on the strokes are actually moving in the opposite direction. So as we watch this, there's this contrary motion of how it feels like it's spinning versus how the intertwining parts are moving. 
So they're kind of moving in opposite directions. So to get this animating, I need to animate two parts of this. So let's unlock this view here so we can get back to our, our displacement map. So we still have a seamless soap here. It's black on the sides. It's still got the gray in the middle. So I need to take this whole image and just kind of shift it and move it around. Now, a great way to do this is to use a plugin called Offset. So I'll create a solid that is gray and make this an adjustment layer. I should also label this bottom layer here. This is my gradient. And the gray solid is actually uh, just a gray solid. On this layer, I'll apply Distort, Offset, and I'll set a keyframe right here at the beginning to the Shift Center part. Okay, so here's a trick I want to show you with the Offset filter. So to create a seamless loop here, we'll create a keyframe for the Shift Center 2 parameter, which is at the 50% point in the composition, basically in the middle. It's 50% in the X and Y. Now let's go to the end, so last uh, frame of the composition, and I'm going to create another keyframe for that. So let's go into here, Offset, Shift, Center 2, and create another keyframe. Let me double click on this and go in here to the units. Now normally we work in pixels, uh, but there's a couple other settings in here that rarely get used, and one of these is the percent of the composition which as you can see, it's 50%. If we want this to be one complete loop, we want it to move 100% of the width of the composition. In this case, we're moving it along the x-axis. So I'm gonna move this 150 along the x. This will essentially get set to negative 150. So now that is moving in the x. Now I need these waves to move in opposite motion. So they need to move, but they also need to overcome this motion of the offset. So I'll go into the colorama and at the first uh, section here in the input phase, there is actually a phase shift. Now, if I play through this, this is moving right to left. And if I move this phase shift, you'll see that for it to move left to right, it also needs to go in a negative direction. So at the beginning of the comp here, again at zero, I'll set a keyframe right there. And at the end of my composition, the very last frame, I'll set a, this phase shift to be, we'll make it negative three. If I set this to negative two, it's actually going to be stuck in place because it's moving and being offset by the offset filter. So we need it to move a little bit faster than the offset filter. So three is the first uh, looping value that we can use and have it move faster than the offset is doing. Now to actually make these seamlessly loop, I need to make sure to go in and not have the keyframes at the last frame of the composition, but I need them one frame beyond that. Now, the reason for that is if this were one continuous clip and I were laying these out on a timeline, the clip would be six seconds long, which is zero to 529. If I were to play that next clip, which would start here again at zero, that next clip would start at six seconds. So I want my loop value to always be from zero to six seconds, even though the duration of my comp is six seconds, the loop value is essentially six seconds plus one frame. So that last value goes one frame beyond the end of the composition. So now if we take a look at our displaced circle, we can see that it is moving with the two different types of motion on here and we should be pretty close. There we go. The only other thing I need is a little gray background that I made. And there we go. So what else could we do with this? Well, let's just think um, a little more creatively here. So let's not just take this person's work and steal it as our own. Thinking creatively, sometimes doing exercises like this get you to a point where you can say, okay, well, what's my spin on this? So my spin on this is, well, let's let's think about what other types of dis distortion we can do out here where we've distorted the image. So I'm going to open up our displacement map here and create another viewer. Just create one other idea here. So let's look at both of these at the same time. 
let's think about maybe doing some sort of fractal noise displacement. Whoops, let's main wave, lock that one, and now we can see them both. So I'm going to create one more solid, and I'll go to noise, fractal noise. And that's pretty interesting. Now it's up here at the top above the offset. So if I bring it below the offset, it will be offset. If I bring it below the gray solid, we'll have it just in pieces like that. Now this is quite a bit of distortion going on here. Let's um, go to the contrast, bring that down, and maybe bring down the brightness. In fact, it looks kind of stretched out. I'm going to go to the scaling here and bring this width down by half. There we go. Now we are completely covering up the gradient that we added. So I could either use like a screen blend mode or just bring down the opacity, which is what I think I'll do. So now we've got kind of a electricity kind of feel going on with our wave displaced circle, which I think is pretty cool. So I mentioned when we made this, we have the ability to create different colors for this. So let's go in here to the outside colors. Maybe make these a little bit more of a lightning kind of color. Maybe darken up this background. And we could probably thicken these 24 by 24. change the blend modes of these to add or perhaps screen. I'll create a adjustment layer and let's add a glow effect. And because they are coming apart and then adding back together, maybe having some contrasting color would actually be good. So one simple exploration gets our creativity flowing and allows us to not only explore some interesting plugins in After Effects and do some creative exercises, but see where else we can go with it. And I'll hand this off to you so you can see what else you can do with it as well. My name's Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.